Today we're going to be talking about tomatoes and how to propagate them. So my best friend in Atlanta bought some tomato plants. And if you guys are beginning gardeners, I keep saying buy plants, don't even screw with seeds. Right now you just need to be successful growing. So he goes out and gets some, some tomato plants and I was telling him before you start trimming them and figuring it out, you can take those plants and make them into a lot more plants really easy. It's it's one of the easiest things to do, but you just got to understand a little bit about tomatoes before you start. So before you trim them, uh, let me teach you how to turn that one tomato plant into a whole bunch. So this is my fancy drawing of a tomato plant. And there's just a few rules you got to know about tomatoes. Uh, one is if you bought something called a determinant or indeterminate. A determinant means that there is a determined growth. In other words, this thing hits three feet and it's a bush and that's it doesn't go past three feet. It's determined. Um, indeterminate means you don't really know how long it's going to go. It's a vine more. That these things will be, depending on the weather, anywhere from six feet to twelve feet. It, they can go really, really long. And uh, places that, like on the equator or Mexico, they just keep growing. They will last a super long time and they become really big. So, uh, figure out if you bought a determinate or indeterminate. That being said, what you're looking for is something called a sucker, like, and that's why I'm calling this, I'm going to get you sucker, because you're going for the suckers. Parts of the plant will turn into all new plants, and the way you figure it out is usually tomatoes kind of grow at a right angle here, and then they grow up from the main stem. So this stem that comes out at a right angle, if you cut this one, it really won't do much, but if you pull this one that is at a 45 degree angle between the crook right here in the little crotch here if you grab this and uh, pinch it off and replant it in water this will grow into a whole new plant so you want to get rid of the suckers now again the way you find that is you look for a branch and you pick the thing in the middle sometimes these branches aren't completely 90 degrees they're a little bent up but you'll see a little thing coming out a little uh, sucker. So with tomatoes there's not a huge amount you have to do but here's what the big thing you have to do. They will rot and get mildew if you do not create enough airflow between the ground and the first uh, leaf. This should be about a six inch gap. Now as the tomato plants growing you're gonna be kinda ruthless and pull off everything until it gets up I mean you're gonna let it get to six feet uh, sorry six inches and then you're gonna start trimming everything underneath it then from that point on it should just be like a vine with uh, this big gap here. As a tomato plant grows you want to constantly search it for suckers and pick it off because they will create a ton of energy uh, to start a new plant and you don't want that. You want everything going up the vine and into the flowers. So as long as you start seeing flowers over six inches you're good and you got to control these suckers. Those are the two main things about tomatoes if you don't do this if you just let them go wild you will get all kinds of mildew and rot and all nasty stuff and sometimes sometimes no matter what you do you do start getting a little mildew and stuff you just cut that branch off and uh, get rid of it and this thing will just keep going so tomatoes are really pretty tough plants anyway so you're gonna go search your thing for suckers pinch these off and put them in water and I'll show you what that'll look like so because it's kind of still spring here and nothing's growing I'm gonna to have to use my little aquaponics setup which is not necessarily the best but you'll get an idea of how this works here's these little cherry tomatoes and if you look I've kind of trimmed even though this is aquaponics I'm, I'm kind of lazy I need to get in here and trim these little ones out I'll pull these out but what you're looking for is in the crook of these things and this is a little hard to see because I've been pulling all the suckers as we go there. You will see a uh, little bud starting right there between the two branches in the crotch. That's a sucker starting. So that's what you're going for. You want to you want to pinch those out and if it is big enough, if you let it get big enough, um, like say you bought it from the store and they're already going, let me show you what to do. Ooh, loose tomato. Ooh, look at that. All right. So here's what you're going to do. Uh, you find a bottle, put it in the sun, and you will look and watch the 
root growth. Those little white dots on the stem start becoming roots. When they get to you know a good inch or two, you can transplant this thing. Now some people, you know, it depends on what kind of school you're in. This is a sucker that was pinched off, but some people actually pull the branches and leaves off except for the very top. And it supposedly it forces new growth into the bud because you'll see like there's a whole new growth right here. So I know this guy's healthy because he's got new growth coming out of a crook. So this is basically he's making a whole new sucker right here. Um, I'm from the school that I actually leaves the leaves on because what the plant does when it dies is it sucks all the chlorophyll back into the stem and it makes it stronger. So if you just cut this off, it never gets any of that chlorophyll. So I just let the leaves die and as soon as they kind of become brown and flaky, I cut them off. I think it makes for a healthier plant. So there you go. That's what you're going for. If you uh, start setting these up, once you see root growth like this, you can start planting them. And uh, you can have a heck of a lot of tomatoes on a really tight budget. You can buy one plant and create, you know, 10 other plants and put them in. Now they'll be behind a little. They won't be as growing as fast as the plant you have, but if you live somewhere kind of warm, um, like he's in Atlanta, he'll get tons of tomato plants if he does this. And then, you know, obviously it grows exponentially because as soon as you do one and it starts growing and you turn into five, well, you got to do remove suckers from five of them and now you got like 25 suckers. And then you'll be overwhelmed. You'll just be giving away tomato plants or throwing them out. Um, one last thing. like Sometimes you can't get a really good sucker. So you have to, uh, like here, these guys are really tiny, but they'll still work. A lot of them will make it. And with the flowers, I just leave them on, but I will pinch them off if they start to actually try to grow. Like, uh, a lot of times when you pinch them off, it does, it puts the thing in shock and it stops growing flowers. You can just leave it on because you don't want to damage the plant over and over and over. But if it looks like it's trying to develop a flower, that's, you need to stop that. You want to pinch all that stuff off. You don't want it trying to grow on fruit. You want it instead trying to grow roots. And this is an old school, um, I don't know if you can find these anymore. But they're basically mason jars that you can put this little wire grid on top, this cap is designed for this and, it, and you put cut flowers in here. Uh, you probably saw this from your childhood, but you don't see them around much anymore. They're pretty cool. So hopefully if you um, want to get a jump start on tomatoes, you can just propagate them. It's a lot easier than buying seeds and uh, you just buy one plant or two if you can find them. Depending on where you are in the country, some places, man, it's, it's really bad. Like, I don't know if you guys heard that Michigan um, is said gardening is non-essential and shut all that down. And I, I warn you guys this is coming, that some of the states are going to do this. So if you can't get plants, uh, you can grow them from seeds and, and then propagate once it gets old enough. But as a new gardener, seeds are really hard. Just skip that and go right to plants. Um, the good news, I'll tell you this, the stores are looking better. I was out there the other day. Now you still can't find rice, flour, soup. Any of the staples are really picked over, but I'm talking to my friends and some of them in the bigger cities uh, aren't having that problem. And everybody just got their government, uh, or, or they're getting their government welfare check, their uh, $1,200 uh, relief check. And so what's happened is that um, there's going to be kind of a rush on gardening stuff. Like I just went out for seed potatoes and they are sold out in three different places and I've been watching. And I called down to Agway. I finally got down to Agway, and they actually had seed potatoes. Um, but they had just gotten them in, and they were almost half gone. It was crazy how fast they go. So go out and get your potatoes. Don't wait on that. Try things like Agway. They're already sold out at Walmart, and they're already sold out at Tractor Supply for us. Seed potatoes, um, you know, you definitely want to get on that. What's crazy is in the north here, you don't even put potatoes in for like two more months. So um, the fact that they're selling out, way before you'd even plant them is uh, a sign that it's coming. Now remember, there's some stuff on the horizon. Even though the stores are filling back up, you're not really going to feel this uh, food shortage for another six weeks to maybe two months. But look at these headlines. Here, uh, like this uh, senator says that uh, there's a, I mean he's admitting it to the news that there's a crisis coming. And I've already talked to you about why that is, right? That they can't get immigrants to uh, 
to work and pick fields so they're just not growing them anymore. Um, although, I did see Canada was actually uh, throwing caution to the wind in flying in large amounts of immigrants to come pick their crops. So maybe the U.S. will snap up and stop, you know, uh, being afraid of the fear demic here and um, actually let food start being made again. So, you know, there is, uh, right now, it's a good time if you have money. I would still stock up. Even, again, remember, even if I'm wrong, all you're doing is buying food when it's uh, at a really good price because it's only going to get more and more expensive. Once the inflation and you print all this money, it's, it's going to be a problem. So, but if I'm right, you've really made a responsible thing and you're protecting yourself and family. So, right now the shelves are getting restocked. People are starting to feel a little better. This is not over. This is just a little blip of they've got some stuff in. Be grateful. Go get that stuff. Okay? So, uh, that'll at least help teach you about tomatoes. If uh, you have any questions, feel free or comments. Put them, put them down here. We're going to keep talking about if you can't. Because, you know, like six weeks from now, people are going to be watching this video and go, Oh, I can't get tomatoes anymore. Those things are sold out. Like, I, I was telling you, I can't believe the potatoes are gone already. That fast. I mean, they were just... Phew. So, these plants will go quick this year. People are very into gardening. I was talking to some people at the gardening center, and they're like, man, we never seen anything like this. Um, so, and you could also have a governor or something that locks your state out, like, uh, like Michigan, where they just can't get plants anymore. They're sitting on the shelves rotting. So, um, be aware, all right? Don't think this is over. Keep stocking up. Buy the dry foods, get the rice, get the beans, get the corn, get the flour. Uh, you can't find yeast anywhere. That's still sold out, but I'm going to teach you, um, hopefully, how to catch yeast out of the air and uh, like they do for old sourdough bread. So if you can't buy yeast, we'll find it and make some. Uh, any other things you guys want to talk about uh, or you can leave in the comments be like, hey, do a story about this. I'll, I'll see what I can do. But hopefully this helped my buddy out and he's watching this because this is basically for him about how to propagate these things. Also remember I'm trying to get off YouTube because it has been a love-hate relationship for many many years. Um, so I release these videos first on BitChute and over at Brighton. If you want a head start and you're that interested in my videos then sign up over there. I'd appreciate it. I'll still release them on YouTube a few days later but you will not be as cool as the cool kids who watch them early. That's all I'm saying. and I know how you feel about peer pressure. So do that uh, lastly, you can support the show by uh, shopping on the Amazon links. Remember, you have to go on the Amazon links first. Go through my link first before you go to Amazon. Otherwise, it doesn't count. And you have to buy it within 24 hours. So if you just park it in your, your uh, you know, to buy later, it doesn't count unless you're buying it right away. So when you're ready to purchase, go through my link. It costs you nothing. It's just a little extra second. It's going to take you out of your day, and it really helps the show. Uh, lastly, you know, I make woodworking. Uh, I am trying to sell some woodwork Why my office is basically closed. Uh, just trying to keep the lights on and do what I can. So if you're interested in some wood carvings, hit me up. Uh, you'll see my, my uh, email in the description. I right, love you guys. Take care of each other. Hang in there.